And welcome back to the Spinner Rack, presented by Comics Remix Breaking the Fourth Wall. Ah! Episode 48. As always, I'm your host, Big B Brian Adams. Joining me, my co host, Jimmy Ruiz. And this I week, uh. Haven't come up with a subtitle yet. You haven't come, no, nothing. Not yet. No? Right on. This week, we're gonna bust right into our review of the new Avengers movie just hit screens Friday, the Thursday night, whatever. Age of Ultron. Just saw it today, Junior. What do you think? Um, not better than the first one, but the first one, I would say, inches out this new one, just by a hair. What makes you say that? Um, there was different things, man. Well, for one, I, I mean, we'll get into the full details later, but I think it was just with the first movie, there was nothing like it at the time. It was mm-hmm. very fresh. You'd never seen all your favorite heroes converging, haha, see what I did there? Nice. On a, on a, on a grand scale like that. So uh-huh. the, to see it on film for the first time, it was just mind-blowing. We've been spoiled now. And now with the second movie, it's just like, okay, there's really nothing new we haven't seen, you know, that, that we're watching here, other than it's just um, uh, furthering the storyline. You know what I mean? Right. So, is it not picking up? No, go ahead. You just look a little light. Oh, yeah. I think my I voice feel... just booms more than yours. Yes, boom! So, there I have go. to, like, just put the mic closer to you. Gotcha. Okay. I liked it. Like I don't get me on, wrong, I loved it. I went on Facebook and I said, "Age of Ultron." So much I hate, so much I love. Mm-hmm. Biggest bit to this movie, I feel like wait, wait, Ultron. Wait, wait, all right, all right, all right, that's where we're going with this. All right, so yeah, no, we're gonna start with the biggest regrets of Age of Ultron. My biggest regret: a mishandling of Ultron. Yes, like Ultron is not quippy. No, he is not. Ultron he... is not. Ultron is a homicidal fucking machine. Yeah, he's not making jokes. Ain't no strings on me. Come on, man. Now, I, that that's the thing I noticed as well. Ultron just kept, you know, joke after joke and like just trying to be like an extent a robotic extension of Tony Stark in a way. Right. You know, and I mean I get it for the movie's purpose, but that's not It was completely untrue to the character. Yeah. Completely. Which Marvel they're kind of back and forth on, you know what I mean? Some things are good, some things are bad. I mean, don't get me wrong, it wasn't I mean, I mean, I could deal with Ultron being that way, mm-hmm. you know, because there was times where it was entertaining. Right. You know, but it just wasn't, you know, he's not quippy. But it was still entertaining in its own right. Oh, yeah. My, my second biggest pitch about the movie, too many jokes. Um. Like, they made with the funny haha too much. Sometimes mm-hmm. it was appropriate, and sometimes I was just like, Quippy eh. one-liners. Just like, Which only on. didn't bother me. No? No, because I don't think I laughed that much. There was a few times I laughed, but I don't think I laughed as much as you're making it seem like there was. Oh, I felt like it was there was a lot. It didn't bother me any. Like, and maybe it's because Ultron did so much. Was, Ultron was so quippy himself. Pro- that that, that could probably be what it is. You know, it, it was. Uh, it just seemed like a lot of jokey joke. Yeah, yeah. But some of it was good. I mean, the back and forth between Quicksilver and Hawkeye. That was interesting. Yeah. Did you see that coming? I, I thought that was good. He didn't see that coming. Yeah, we'll right. get into that. Um, you know, all in all, it was, it was a pretty good movie outside of those complaints. Uh, like I called you on the phone when you're on your way over here and I was like the whole big, th- there were elements of that movie that I was like, people love this yet shit on the man of steel. And there are some elements there. Like the level of destruction was like out of hand, you know, because but yet that, it's in some shit little European city. So I bet that it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Nothing against European cities. Yeah, no. Um, no, I honestly think what it is, is that's what is really going to initiate the Superhero Registration Act for the Captain America Civil War movie. Oh, yeah. That's that's another thing I'll say about this movie. I definitely felt the seeds being planted for, for their things. next phase. Yeah. I could see, because, you know, we know the next Thor movie is Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Yeah. Obviously, that was planted in there. We know the next Avengers movie is going to be Infinity War. Obviously, that was planted in there. Mm-hmm. You could see there was a little uh, back and forth with Tony and, and Captain America for Civil during War. the middle of the movie. You could see the setup for Civil War. Did you happen, because when you watched it, did you stay for the mid-credits? Yeah, no, I heard it was... Uh, see, I had saw, it on, I saw online before the movie came out, there was a leak that they that they, it was Spider-Man. I, uh, that was supposed to be the very end credits. We stayed. Yeah. Did not come on. No. Researched it. It was a hoax. It wasn't a true ending. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, see, dude, I think that would have been just fucking awesome. Why not, right? Right? They're, it's going to happen. Why not just give us the, you know? Yeah. But I heard it was Deadpool. No. Really? 
It's not Deadpool because Deadpool's owned by Fox. I know. That's why I thought it was crazy. Yeah, and I bailed. I thought there was no just you know no, no. end credits. It was uh, mid credits or whatever. It was. Um, I personally also one thing that I, I saw was planted before I get to that was the uh, Wakanda Black Panther stuff. Oh yeah, totally. With Ulysses says Claw and then Ultron ripping off Claw's arm, which I thought was badass. Did you catch that? Probably it's in several scenes. I'm sure you did. Um, but the one thing that um, so so you know they're mentioning Wakanda and they're mentioning this so at the mid credit scenes, it's like some it's dark and you see like these gears and stuff moving and there's something in there and it's like somebody like. The camera view is you're inside this vault or this closet or whatever. So you're watching whoever's going to open the vault, open it. And I see, at first, I see, like, this glove. And I'm like, fucking Black Panther, man. He's coming out. He's going to, you know, you guys destroyed my city, blah, blah, blah. But no, as the light turns on, you see it's the Infinity Gauntlet itself. And Thanos reaches in. He puts it on. It doesn't have any of the stones, though. And he puts it on. He's like, it's time for me to handle this myself. And that's that's all it was. Wow. Yeah. See, people are assholes on the internet. That was actually a friend of mine that said it was Deadpool. No. He said it was Deadpool sitting in the theater of the movie, eating popcorn, and he said this movie sucks. And I was like, really? And I thought, you know, maybe it was just some cross-promotional bullshit. No, it's fine. Because they, they will made not the, promote. Oh, that's right. That's right. No, you shouldn't do that, man. Huh. That would have been funny as hell. I, I, I thought it sounded funny. I'm not a Deadpool fan, but it gave me a chuckle. Yeah. But, but. uh... I mean, you could obviously see they're setting up the future of uh, <laughs> the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I also appreciated uh, Hawkeye. They made me appreciate Hawkeye. Yeah, I they kinda, just showed the human side of I, it. I kind of really didn't care for Hawkeye, but uh, then the only exposure we really had to him was the minimal little part in Thor, and then him being pretty much brainwashed the entire whole of Avengers. Yeah. So it was nice to see him humanized a little bit. Yeah. I liked it, you know, and it gave you a perspective because, you know, we're not gods and Yeah, no, and... exactly. That's exactly what I thought when the movie was over. It's Hawkeye became, like, the, the viewer's perspective on the world. Mm -hmm. I honestly did think, though, that Hawkeye's family was either going to die or it was fake. Really? I thought he was going to die. All right, okay, like, when he grabbed that kid, I was like, holy shit, they humanized this guy just to kill him off. Jeremy Brenner must have been bitching too much. Yeah. But it's... And then, boom. He didn't see that coming. Yeah. Quicksilver got it. Dude. They did a great job with those two. Great job, man. I had no idea what to expect. Yeah, neither did I. They did a really you know great job. No, that's the Olsen twin sister, Scarlet yeah. Witch. She's the hot one. Yeah, way better way better actress than her sisters, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, they were handled excellently. Uh, Vision was even handled well. He looked good. I liked that. I was kind of like, I mean, seeing the, uh, the, the ads with him mm. up to the seeing the movie, I was kind of like, eh, you know, I don't know, I don't really care for the look. Uh, I, what kind of, I'm curious about now is that he has that soul gem in his head. Yes. So mind, obviously. It's the mind gem. And if you paid attention. Oh, was it the mind? I thought the mind. it was the soul gem. No, it's the mind. Hence the reason it's there. Right on. And that's why it was uh, mind, like, messing with everybody. So, is that going to get ripped out of his head now? That's a good question, because didn't Adam Warlock yeah, support that? Yeah, that's what I thought. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Now, is, is Guardians of the Galaxy 2 supposed to drop before uh, yeah, yeah. Infinity War starts? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So I'm sure that'll just be a tie-in directly into that movie. Oh, yeah. Um, it was a good movie, man. Lots of action. The I loved the scene with them all partying together and trying to like lift up Thor's hammer. You know what? As many times as they show that on TV or you've seen it online, and it's funny. It just watching it in the context of the movie, it was still funny. Yeah, you know. Yeah, when it, when it came up, I was like, "Oh, this scene," and I, you know, I've seen it a million times now because of TV and the internet. But it, yeah. it played very well in the film. Oh, I agree. I really liked the development of the Hulk and Black Widow. Black Widow. Um, also, with the ending on the Hulk, I had I heard rumors. Say, I heard rumors about Planet Hulk that as well. they got that he launched into space. But at the end of the movie. They kind of threw a question mark on that. Yeah, they don't say. They just show the Quinjet flying off. Yeah. And then Nick Fury says that the jet crashed, but he may have jumped off. We don't know where the hell it crashed. Yeah, but it crashed on Earth. Right, right. So what I'm saying is, is maybe he didn't leave the Hulk. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. I mean, that could be the perfect excuse to do a Planet Hulk movie. Mark Why Ruffalo not? said he wants to do Yeah, it. I think it would be sweet. Even though Bruce Banner played such a minimal role in that story, we only see him like once or twice. 
Oh, and Planet Hulk? Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, they could do a two-parter. Yeah. Because that's won't. a lot of crap to slap into one movie. And then they could roll into a World War Hulk movie. Mm-hmm. No, not going to happen. No? You yeah. don't think so? World War Hulk, remember the main reason, the reasoning behind World War Hulk was because he was exiled, not that he exiled himself. Ah, uh, true that. So World War Hulk was him coming back to exact revenge on the Illuminati for sending him. Right, the right, place. that's true, that's true. So that wasn't set up cinematically. Right, um, because they st- Doctor Strange was one of them that sent them. He hasn't been introduced yet. No. Xavier, owned by Fox. Black true, Bolt, true. hasn't been introduced yet. Reed but Richards, we'll be... owned by Fox. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, but they can always change it up. I mean, come on, Hank Pym created Ultron. True. And and Marvel still owns Hank Pym. Hank Pym could have still created Ultron, but they chose to go the Tony Stark route. Which made sense. Which, uh, now... Watching it, it made sense. Hearing about it at first was like, no, why are they doing this? Yeah, it, it made sense when you watch the movie, but outside of it, you're like, that's fucking stupid. Um, Iron Man 3. Do we have to talk about End of the that? movie, he destroys everything. Yeah. You come back, he's got all new shit. What was the point of that, then? Like, I don't understand what the point of all the shit that was Iron Man 3, and none of it played over into the new Avengers. None of it. Maybe he realized, you know, he's like, oh, I gotta rebuild now. He's got a bunch of suits of armor. He's not using the weird remote control armor, which I think would have worked great for this movie. Well, he doesn't need it anymore. Why Because remember, he controls it um, when he got out, when he first found the lab, when they, they invaded this country. Remember, he's like, um, sentry mode, and it just opened, and he walked out of yeah, it. Yeah, totally. And now it's on its own. I guess. So it doesn't need the remote. But still, it was a cool concept they could have used. In I was comic. waiting, man. I was honestly waiting for something Black Panther related for the fact that, um, well, it's going to be Marvel's big first character of color. Uh, but the fact that they name dropped it and then they went there and they destroyed the city with the uh, Iron Man and Hulk fighting. So you figure that's got to be something coming out of there, you know, where he's just going to be pissed. Like, you guys can't come into my country, you know. So it's going to be one of those things where I believe... He's going against Claw for finding, like, now that this has all been exposed and Ultron and everything, Black Panther's going to be like, I can't believe this was happening in my own country. How did I let this go? Blah, blah, blah. Thank you, Avengers, for helping me expose it, but you also destroyed my city. And for that, you guys have got to pay. So that was Claw. That was Andy Serkis, right? Yeah. Dude, that guy's awesome. That guy's awesome. Like, when I saw him, I was like, holy shit. That's Andy Serkis. It's Gollum. That was great. Yeah, no, it's, there was obviously a lot, a lot of setup. I've heard people complain that have seen this movie before I did that like, oh, if you're not a fan of the comic books, there's so much crap in there that's just going to confuse you. You're not going to understand. Not at all. I didn't really feel like that at all. No, no, I no. feel like if you if you're a fan of the movies and you've seen other Marvel movies, you're aware of what the Infinity Gems are. At least to a point. At least the concept of them. Yeah. Because it was pretty much discussed in Guardians of the Galaxy. Did you hear that as well? That Thor called them the Infinity Gems. Yeah. And every other movie, they've been called the Infinity Stones. Yeah. So I don't know if that's something that like Marvel decided to fix. You know, just like, well, why are we calling them stones? Let's just call them gems. Or it's some. There is a difference of reasoning why Thor called them gems and everybody refers to them as stones. I guess that remains to be seen. Well, we'll find out. That. See, that's another thing. How is Thanos going to get a hold of them? Maybe he comes to Earth to get the one off of Vision. Well, doesn't uh, the Collector have, like, two or three of them? He had one. He had the purple one, remember? In Guardians, and then uh, his assistant grabbed it, and then they grabbed it, because that's when Batista... Batista okay, well, he's also the... got the one from... Uh, Thor. Yeah, he from, has the Thor. He has the red one. That is the Soul Gem. He's got the Dark World one. The Ether. That's what yeah. they called it. Yeah. Now, and then, the, the Asgardians have the Cosm Cube, correct? I believe so. No, because that's where the Mind Gem was. It was no, Avengers. that was that was in the staff. Right, and isn't the co- oh yeah different things. Okay, okay, I'm thinking the cube was what what was no. in the staff. Okay, the staff was its own thing. Yeah, no, you're right. Yes, Guardians have that. So I mean, it's <clears throat> it's interesting how they built all this together. I mean, I don't know. It was good. I liked it. It was kind of long. <laughs> you know, it was a lot when of you just look back at for, it for as much shit as talked about. I hate to go back to this about Man of Steel and the destruction. I felt like there was an absolute asshole of destruction in this movie. There absolutely was. But the difference being, I believe, is that everybody has this wholesome image of what Superman's supposed to be. Superman doesn't do that. Superman doesn't do this. And for him to do it, as I think what's what's causing all the, you know, or what caused all the outrage for it, was with the Avengers, they're not really... Yeah, no know, one knows anything. Yeah, it's just like, whatever, they, they come. But we all know Stark will fix everything. Right. But like I said earlier, I believe that's what's going to lead in a big part of what's going to lead into uh, Civil War. Because in Civil War, what was the main catalyst? 
the uh, new warriors running around and um, pushing these villains to destroy this area. Well, yeah, well, they had their reality TV show. Yeah, but obviously there is no new warriors in this. There's no reality TV show. So what else do you do? You go with this level and you have um, the destruction, not only of Wakanda, but of this European country. What was it called? Sarkovia? Isn't it Markovia in the comics? I don't know. Why didn't they just call it Markovia? I think it was called Sarkovia. If it's so close, why not just, you know? know. It's one of those stupid changes. It's probably dumb to complain about. Um, The Hulk Iron Man fight? Dude, awesome. Yeah. was awesome. I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was. I like how they... When I... You're watching the trailers, you're like, man, how are they going to do this? And they really, they really played into, like, that whole Scarlet Witch messing with everybody's minds in Wakanda. Yeah. They played into everything so well. And I liked the fact that Hawkeye, Hawkeye didn't get mind controlled, considering he spent, you know, the majority of Avengers 1. And he kind of made a joke yeah. about that. Did you catch it? Yeah, I did. So that was one of the jokes I didn't mind. Yeah. But there were some jokes I was just like, really, the Ultron stuff is what bothered me the most. But I guess, like you said, that comes from him being created by Tony Stark, so he's kind of like... But really, he wasn't created by Tony Stark. He was created by Hydra because they found that in Hydra. They found the staff, and but the... they but they found the, the they found that consciousness. Because you remember, he pulls him up and he shows him the banner, and he's like, "Look, this is Jarvis, Jarvis yeah. and this is this new thing." Now, of course, they tinker with it, and ultimately, he creates Ultron. Yeah. But still, the idea and the concept was already kind of there. True. Um. It was good, man. It was a good movie. You know, Marvel's streak keeps up. Can they keep it up? I don't know. I saw the trailer. Um, I got the Batman Superman trailer. Yeah. How did that look on the big screen? Exactly the same yeah. as it looks on you. Watch it on your phone or whatever. Um, it stood it and impressed me. No. Um, got a newer, fanta- I don't know how new, but a longer, newer Fantastic Four. I still don't want to see that on the big screen. No. No. Um, no. We got Ant-Man. The longer, the newer one with the Thomas the Train at the end. Right. That looks good. On the big screen, that looks really good. You know, I, I'm very excited for that one. Um, And we got uh, Tomorrowland with George Clooney. Okay. That looks really, really good. Never even heard anything about that. Dude, I totally thought it was something else. And then, like, the way the trailer starts, and I'm just like, wow, what is this? And then you watch it, and I'm just like, the, the effects and the imagination that they put into this movie... Like, it, you got to watch the trailer. When we're done recording, man, you got to, like, YouTube this trailer. It is just, like... I'll check it out. The weapons that they use in this movie and, like, the way things... Like, it's just... Dude, I was just like, holy cow. Um, But they also have this other movie coming out. Now, this movie, I had no idea what to expect. It starts off, and the black screen says, in 19, you know, in the 1980s, or uh, we launched, or 1985 or something, we launched this uh, time capsule into space, hoping that when we found... You know, whoever found it would see what life, you know, in the 80s was like, like our pop culture and this and this and that. And it's like, but we were oh, wrong. Oh, pixels? Yeah. But I had no idea. And, like, the way the trailer was presented, I'm like, man, what is this? Another great alien movie, you know? Like, something crazy. And then you see that Alien sent 8-bit version of, like, Pac-Man. That's and Adam, that's like, Adam, Adam Sandler's Sandler. inability to come up with original ideas. Yeah, I was like, oh, God. Because I, I saw that, and I'm like, oh, that looks funny. And then I just happened to be watching Futurama. And then I was like, holy shit, they totally did this on Futurama. Yeah. It's like the same thing. It's just, uh, I don't know. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe not. I mean, kids aren't aware of, future, of that Futurama episode, I'm sure. But, so, Age of Ultron. Final fucking thoughts on Age. Um, Definitely can't... Wait for the Blu-ray. I'll, I'll be picking that up. Um, I don't know if I'd go back to the theater and see it. I think I'm at that age now where unless it like totally, absolutely blows my mind, mm-hmm. then one viewing is enough. Especially because I plopped down 28 bucks. Right on. You know, eight for my ticket, 20 in junk food. Right on. So <laughs> that's how they get you, man. It is how they get you. Uh, so no 3D or IMAX, huh? No, one of my buddies went with us, and uh, he gets motion sickness. Right on. So he couldn't watch the 3D, and we just kept teasing him the whole time. But it was cool. I don't mind, as long as I watch the damn thing. You know, and then nowadays, 3D is overrated anyway. You know, unless... The last 3D movie that I saw that was really, really, like, 3D, that, like, really stands out was Avatar. You know? Oh, oh. But I will say that Jurassic World, which is another trailer I got, yeah. I'm going to go see that in 3D. Yeah, that movie looks awesome. I might have to take my kid to see that because he's developed a dinosaur obsession as of late. As you can see, there's dinosaurs all over the place. 
Oh, uh, yeah, next to you by the TV over here next to me. Kids are not about dinosaurs. Did or did they not kill Quicksilver? Is he That's dead? A good question. Because when they, yeah, bef- I should have brought this up before I asked you your final thoughts on it. Obviously, at the end, when the, the next Avengers movie comes, it's probably going to be minus Thor, Captain America, and Iron Man. Or not Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, and Hulk. Yeah. Well, obviously, because they're setting up a whole new Avengers team. Yeah. Which true. kind of kind of looks like all new, all different Avengers in some ways. The Ultimates. No. All new, all different Avengers. Oh, the Marvel thing. Which gotcha, you could have gotcha. picked up Saturday on Free Comic Book Day. I didn't get it. You didn't get it? There was I went to the one shop I went to, they only had a five limit. Oh. And I picked up the Avengers magazine that they had. Mm-hmm. Um, I picked up the Turtles, of course. Um, what the hell was the other one I picked Did up? Did you do Convergence or Secret Wars? Nope. No? Nope. Seems a lot of people ordered that, and I've got, I had a store where I had a guy who was holding some stuff for me anyway. Um, I picked up two copies of the Sonic book, only because it's always a flip book with Iron Man. Right. Or, excuse me, not Iron Man, Mega Man. Right. So I, I was filing under Mega Man, filing under Sonic. And then uh, Street Fighter was the other one I picked up, just because I like Street Fighter. Well, anyway, all new, all different. A lot of, it seemed like a decent amount of those characters were there on the screen vision. Falcon, even though in the comic book he's Captain America, but it's yeah. still Falcon. Iron Man, who they say it's not Iron Man, but you had War Machine. So it was kind of like, eh, you know, they were missing Spider-Man. But I could see it being set up for the next generation so they don't have to st- just keep paying these guys millions and millions of dollars to keep doing it. Right. You know, obviously Ragnarok, they're probably killing off Thor, which means that they could do the rebirth of Thor at some point with someone else's Thor. Yeah. Because if he's come back and been reborn, even though it's the same guy, he could totally it could be like a Doctor Who thing. Yeah. You know? And obviously Vision has kind of replaced Iron Man. Kind of. There's no plans for Iron Man 4. Uh, he will it's be showing up in Captain America 3. Here and there, like, you know, like Downey Jr. says he'll do it, then he says no, and he says he will, and he says no, and who knows, man. Yeah. So, I mean, at some point, these characters I still have think to become this replaceable. imaginative Iron Man 4 will still probably be better than the Fantastic Four movie that we're getting. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Hell, Batman versus Superman is not even going to be all that great, but I, but I guarantee it's going to blow away Fantastic Four. Of course. You know? Well, don't forget, Fantastic Four comes out this year. Yeah, I know. As Batman Superman is next year. Yeah. You know so what I'm mean, excited for? I'm kind of off subject still with movies, though. The new Turtles movie. I'm not. I'm still not. I just, I like Stephen Amell. I think yeah, but what, what about, what about Medea? That's freaking Baxter Stockman. Let me wrap Age of Ultron real quick. If they killed Quicksilver, <laughs> that sucked because I really liked him a lot. I thought he was one of the highlights of the movie. I, You know what? I, I was very... But I have I a love-hate to... relationship with the movie. I was trying to remember. In Days of Future Past, what did they call him? I, did they call him Peter? I think so. Okay, because in the credits, he was listed as Pietro slash Quicksilver. So I'm not sure how... Because I remember they were saying that that was one of the things. And obviously... I don't know if you noticed, Captain America called them the Enhancements. Yeah. It's like, okay. Did you did you notice at the end with Hawkeye's new son being born that his middle name was Pietro? Yeah. That was pretty cool. Here's my thing, though. When I saw Quicksilver laying there, riddling bullets, the only thing that popped in my head, inhuman Tajirian Mist. I don't know why, because I know that Tajirian Mist aren't necessarily uh, for Britain. They're not like, uh, what's this? Ra's al Ghul's pit, you know, the Lazarus pit. Right, they're not like resurrections, but right. they have healing properties. I believe they do. So that's the, that's what I thought of there. So he could come back? Why introduce him that quick and kill him off? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You know. But I do have more information on Secret Wars. Okay. Secret Wars is now pretty much the main book. Is about, okay, so all these incursions have been going on, if you haven't been reading New Avengers. Where it's pretty much, this thing happened... And the multiverse is collapsing by itself. I saw that. Okay. Yeah, I remember that. So worlds are showing, Earths are great, two Earths meet up, and then they destroy each other, and then they disappear unless, which what's happening with our Earth is the Illuminati, and now uh, Thanos and his team of people are destroying the other world when it comes into contact with ours before it destroys ours. Gotcha. So it's come down to there's only two universes left. Ours. 616. Yes, and the ultimate, mm-hmm. and Battle World, which Battle World is it's, pieced up, made up the fragments of, of everything fragments else. of everything else. Gotcha. Which Hello Convergence, like it's the same thing. Well, really. what would you rather read? Honestly, 
because of Convergence and how much it sucked so far. Like, oh, and, her, and Convergence has completely sucked. The main book has been mediocre. The tie-ins, the ones I thought would be great, have sucked. The ones I've had no interest in reading have been good. Mm. Like, a lot of pre-Crisis Earth-1 stuff, like Adventures of Superman, Green Arrow, Justice League International, Blue Beetle, those books have been real solid. Swamp Thing, solid. The stuff I was looking forward to, like Batman and Robin, pre-New 52, or pre-Flashpoint is what they call it. I was expecting Bruce Wayne, or not Bruce Wayne, I was expecting Dick. I think we talked about this the other yeah. week. But the things I was expecting I didn't get, so I've hated the ones I've looked forward to, and the ones I haven't looked forward to have been pretty decent. Um, Battle World, man, I don't know. It really just seems like, I think because Convergence hit first, whether it's been planned longer, Secret Wars and Battle World has been planned longer, I'm not going to argue that. I mean, because the buildup for Convergence, whether people want to argue it or not, has been Future's End. Part yeah. of it has been Future's End. And the end of the world, and world end, or whatever the hell, Earth 2 world end. It, both those titles have been running for over almost a year, and they all led to Convergence. I know this Secret War stuff and the incursions have been building since the beginning of Marvel now, which is like two years. All this stuff is pre-planned. It's just eerily creepy how similar they are. Mm -hmm. Because the one thing I've noticed about Convergence is like it's mediocre, stupid stuff, and then pre-Gotham City from this point. Gotham City from this point, and this point, and this point. And Metropolis from this point, and this point. And they're not like fucking spreading it out. And I think that's part of my bitch about Convergence is they haven't explained why all these people at these times always are in fucking Gotham City or Metropolis. There's no explanation. And, and some of it is explained, but some of it's not. And some of it's just bad explanation. So it's kind of maybe weary of even caring about reading the Battle World book. Because is it going to matter? Because from what I have taken away from what Secret Wars will end being is we'll have one unified universe. And nothing else is going to matter. And it seems to me, and I've said this before, probably a year ago, maybe longer, that I felt like Marvel was streamlining their comic books to be more in line with the cinematic universe and it's ex exactly what we're going to have when Secret War is over. You You're so? going to have something that is more relatable to the movie-going audience, which is not completely terrible because, to be honest, I kind of like the movie Avengers more than I like the actual Avengers. Yeah. I just, I guess because we're seeing them played out, I don't like the uh, comic Avengers as much because everybody's been an Avenger and it's, it killed it for me. Yeah. Like if I wanted to read the adventures of this guy or this guy, I'd go read their, don't cram them down my throat, putting them on the Avengers. Now, like I said, everybody in the Marvel Universe at some point or another, every hero has been a damn Yeah, Avenger. everybody. You know, it's just like, I get it. They're trying to get it. Oh, you know what? I like how, you know, the thing is written. In the Avengers books, Ben just knows how to write them. I'm gonna check out the thing in the Fantastic Four books. You know, I, I get it. You know, cross promotion, I suppose. Right. But nah. So Secret Wars. I mean, it's not out yet. I don't know. Hopefully, it'll be better than Convergence is. But I'm not too terribly excited. Yet. What I am excited about is that the front runner for Spider Man in the Cinematic U is, uh, I think, I believe his name is Asa Butterfield. That kid, I put that picture. He's, I yeah, he's from uh, Ender's Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids only like 18 years old. Dude, run with that shit. Yeah. Be Spider-Man. This yeah. is what we needed. We don't need dudes that are almost 30 years old playing Spider-Man. This is what we need. Mm -hmm. And like we said earlier when we were talking Age of Ultron, it's a damn shame that that, that they didn't put that Spider-Man end credit scene because it was great. Yeah. Because all it is is a window washer, clean the dirty window, and as he's cleaning the window away, you see Spider-Man behind him on a... On, on an opposing building. I'm saying he missed a spot. And he's like, hey, you missed a spot. It's a great nod to the fact that he's going to be in the Marvel U. Yeah. That'd have been great. And especially because he was in full outfit, you don't have to worry about the actor. Yeah, you don't have to worry about the actor. No. I, I'm, I'm hard. It's hard to imagine how he's going to fit into the Civil War movie. I don't like the fact that he's being introduced in that movie because he was an integral part of that storyline. Not really. You don't think so? Not at all. I think if you go back, and you can even find articles on the interwebs that will support what I'm going to say here, he really wasn't. Outside of him showing up and unmasking and then flip-flopping on sides, he had no impact on that story. Okay, true. I think Civil War had more of an impact on Spider-Man. Yeah, Civil Spider War had more of an impact on the Spider-Man story, on the Spider-Man books, than Spider-Man had on Civil War. Very true. That was a hell of an <clears> impact, though. I mean, look at what happened. 
you know, Aunt May gets shot, makes yeah. it a manifesto, relaunches a brand new day, blah, right. blah, blah. <laughs> Everything that pretty much ruined Spider-Man, but uh, being, you know, not not counting the other, which I can't even hate on the other anymore because I really liked Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse was good. And we couldn't have had Spider-Verse without the other. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it from individual story plots, yeah, some good, some bad. But if you look at the overall thing from where it started to where it is, it makes more sense. It does. It's a lot more enjoyable that way. Because, you know, you got to go through that road to get it's, there. Yeah, it's, it's just when you're going, it's, it's sometimes the road is hard traveled. You're just like, oh, God, I want to punch myself in the face. This is fucking terrible. I hate what they're doing to my favorite character. You know, that's like Iron Man. It's so funny. Ten years ago, they do Civil War. I feel like Iron Man's a jag off. Now they make Iron Man a literal jag off with Superior Iron Man. Love it. So weird. So weird. You're cursing a lot this episode. Am I? A, a lot. It's just my enthusiasm. Swear word. I just said jag off. It's not really a swear. You go. Potting off. Yeah, I can't help it. No, you don't. You don't get it. Potty mouth. Oh, haha, yeah. Avengers is the running the theme of Avengers. Yeah, the bad mouth. The bad, bad mouth. Word. Jesus. You know what? What joke uh, was funny, but it wasn't like supposed to be a joke kind. Of, at least it didn't feel like one. Iron Man and Hulk when they were fighting, and he throw he smashes Hulk with the elevator. He's like, "Stay down!" And Hulk just kind of gives him that look and it spits. And he's like, "I'm sorry." You know, like <laughs> it was the the humor. Although while I felt it was overused, a lot of it had its points. Yeah, a lot of it was was funny. It did make me laugh. Uh, the last thing I want to complain about this episode: Iceman being gay. Okay, go for it. I'm really tired of. Now, before you get into this, <clears throat> let me just say I have nothing against characters being gay or anything like that. My problem is when they do it just to spite uh, for sales spikes, and that's what I feel this was. You have just said everything I was going to say. Thank oh. you. No, I have no problem with <laughs> gay characters at all. I have no problem with... I don't care. But it's the fact you're going to take an established character where I don't give a... I don't give a damn what anyone it's says. too late now. Yeah, it is too, now. <laughs> it is too late now. I don't, give, I don't give a shit what anybody says. You can't go back and say, oh, because he's had woman problems, he's gay. Because they still haven't come out and said that the current 616 Iceman is gay. They haven't said adult Bobby is gay. They've said that all new X Men Bobby is gay, which, like I pointed out to you when I read to you, or I didn't, I paraphrased that it was basically Jean Grey telling him was gay and him just being like, "Yeah, okay, you're right." It was stupid. Yeah, it was stupid. It was like, let's make Iceman gay to sell more books. And I'm telling you, when it's when it fails, it's all going to come back to the Black Vortex and him giving up the powers from the Black that he received from the Black Vortex and it inherently changing him some way that he wasn't before. What does that say to you? When I re when I heard they made him gay, <clears throat> I was like, this really pisses me off. I love Iceman. I, I, now, if he would have been gay the whole time, we've never had a problem with it. Like you said, it's the just changing a character, the core of what a character is, to try and spike sales. Mm -hmm. You know, Michelle Rodriguez said it best. If you want these characters, create them. Don't just staple it on something else. You know, don't make... Because look how well that shit works out. Look at the the... Uh, the Islamic Green Lantern. Where the hell has he been since he's created? Nowhere. Really? Nowhere. I haven't been following. I mean, wasn't he part of Justice League of America? Yeah, but who read that book? Exactly. Is Alan Scott or two Green Lanterns still gay? Yeah, okay. but it's totally plays. That was like the one exception where I was like, okay, because you're not forcing the character to be gay. This is a he complete was, he's reboot. He's being introduced Right, already. he's being yeah. introduced as gay. Right. No problem with it at all. It honestly doesn't even play much into the story for that. At all. I mean, I bet someone will still be like, oh, you're full of shit, Big B. It fucking does. But it doesn't. It doesn't really. It, little little spots here and there. But it's it just, overall, it doesn't play. It's like Angela, the Angela book. She has that transgender best friend or whatever that you wouldn't have even known she was transgender until she said it. And you feel like they just said it because, well. Why not? We have to we have to have a transgender character. Yeah. <clears throat> even though, you know, they did that in Batgirl and people were appalled because Batgirl responded weirdly to it. Mm -hmm. Like I'm sorry, but if you're fighting someone for a week and they're dressed like you and you and you're a woman and you think they're a woman and then they reveal yourself and you're a dude, you should fucking be allowed to be a little surprised. But no, that uh vocal minority of the internet all up in arms. 
Yeah. Oh, Batgirl hates homosexuals. Wasn't Loki at one point a woman? He was. There you go. And now he's an effeminate kid. No complaints there. You know? It's... Whatever. <clears throat> I mean, it's just one of those things. If you explain it well, it doesn't matter. But if you just slap in, oh, Bobby, you're gay. No, I'm not. No, no really, Bobby, you're gay. Okay, yeah, I guess okay. I am. Yeah, I guess I'm gay. Oh, do you think Angel's gay? Ha, ha, ha. Come on. Really? It's terrible. But I'm telling you, that's all going to come back to the Black Vortex. Really good series. Pick it up if you haven't read it. Should be out in trade in a few months anyway if you haven't. Closing, if you want to go that way. Closing thoughts. Age closing of thoughts. Age of, Age of Ultron. Ultron. One out of four Chicago stars. I'm going to give it a two and a half. I don't know why I said one out of four, but how many stars? I'm going to give it a two and a half. Two and a half. I'll give it a... I'll go ahead and give it a three. Three stars. First Avengers got a four. Well, I don't remember what I gave it back then, but I'm giving it now. The First Avengers is a four. And Winter Soldier is a three and a half. Winter Soldier for me was a four. That was a great movie. Avengers was probably a three and a half. This one would have been a three if Ultron would have been a little more... Serious? Yeah. He, lo- he looked like a Decepticon. He did. He looked very strange. Yeah. Like, it I was like, just an odd design. Did you catch, though, that, you know, all his drones, they looked like the comic book version of him? I did. That was pretty cool. I thought that was cool. But if that's the case, why not just make the regular one look like that? Yeah, why not? I, I felt like he kind of looked like Lord Havoc. He's a, a DC character, an obscure DC character. I don't know if you know who he is. No. But very, so yeah. In closing, Age of Ultron, good, go see it. Marvel DC, stop shoehorning minorities and different sexualities and ethnic types into characters that are pre-existing. It's just not cool. Unless you're going to do it out the gate, like Wally West being black. I don't, it doesn't bother me. Nope. It's going to work well for the Flash show. It's not going to bother me there either. But just, it's like, it's like back in the 80s or early 90s when Frank Castle had a surgery to make himself look black. Oh. Come on, dudes. Come on. At least back in the day with Superman where, uh, in the Lois Lane book where it was like, what would it be to uh, be a black woman for a day? Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. At least that was a different, like, point of view and they explained it, you know, because back then the racism was all over. You know? Yeah, totally. Like, well, what, what would it be? For one of our predominantly white female characters. Yeah, they were trying to they were trying to tell a story. They yeah. were trying to make a point on to society. Yeah, they weren't trying to make a buck. Correct. Which gay ice man is just trying to make a buck. It is what it is. We got some special guests coming up soon um, on our soon to come Friday segment, this uh, spotlight. Um, we're not going to reveal the guest's name yet. Uh, we don't want to jinx ourselves. Yeah, it's still being finalized, but. Um, this should be fun, I hope. Uh, one for sure, we just got to contact that person. The other one, make arrangements. And then the third one, um, I think you're just blowing me off. Yeah. I, I think so. Then we got to start reaching those, out to some more people. One of those things where he was like, yeah, I'll do it. And then, you know, hey, remember you said it? Like, man, he was just ignoring me. Yeah, that sucks. So, I, I, we'll see. I, I can, I'm going to still try to push because it would be interesting to have him on the show. But soon. Soon. Obviously, Just, when we're ready for that show to roll out, we'll announce yeah. it here. Um, I also want to say uh, the comicsremix.com website, um, it's, like I said before, it's going to get overhauled. So, I mean, as for now, you can go on there and under uh, the main home, you can see the main uploads. If you go under Spinner Act, you can see all these episodes or hear all these episodes. Um, if you go to Collector's Corner, you can actually watch Alex's review show. Uh, we reviews the toys and stuff like that. Uh, we haven't changed the name on the website yet. Um, we haven't updated super fans since we created a damn website, and I apologize for that. Um, but we're in the stages of creating a, a, a new version of the website. Um, time is a pain in the ass. I haven't had time to sit down with the uh, designer um, probably next week, actually. So it'll get there. Baby stuff. Bear, yeah, bear with us. Bear with us. You know, everything is you know social media with us anyhow. You know, and then whatever videos are on YouTube end up uploading on the uh, website. So for now, we'll we'll, we'll get there. We're going to be adding a lot more stuff. So uh, that's all I got, man. Let's, yeah, that's uh, it for this uh, issue 40 or episode 48. I keep wanting to call them issues. Issues, episodes, whatever. Whatever. 48, our Age of Ultron review, plus some comics news thrown in there. Uh, join us in here Wednesday for a new lockup. Until then, we'll see you next week with Breaking the Fourth Wall.